The Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo Sancta Marathi On a great bay on the coast of Novi Zim, two families had fished for many generations and had squabbled over the rights to those waters for just as long. Addis Indue and Netta Adaba could scarcely speak a civil word to each other. As their competing fleets grew, so did their profits, and so did the enmity between them. The fishermen in their employ were known to cut each other's nets, tear holes in their rivals' sails, and pull their boats alongside so that the crews could better punch and kick each other. But then, as is the way of things, on a market day, Addis Indoe's son, Duli, went with his friends to buy Jerda at the very same time that Netta Adaba's daughter, Baya, had a craving for sweet oranges. There, amid the fruit stalls and shouting fishmongers, Duli and Baya fell immediately in love. Perhaps, if their families hadn't hated one another, it would have been a passing infatuation and nothing more. Or perhaps they would have fallen in love anyway. Maybe some people are destined for one another and lucky enough to know it when they finally meet. Handsome Duli and beautiful Baya began meeting in secret on the property of Sancta Marathi, who lived near the shore. When people left the old woman gifts, the skies had a way of clearing and lost ships somehow found their way to harbor. She let the lovers meet on their little dock, where they mended nets together and watched the stars and hatched a plan to run away. They agreed they would each steal a boat from the family fleets and meet beyond the bay, where their parents' rivalry could not touch them. Duli crept out after dark, secured a small skiff, and sailed off beneath a cloudy and starless sky. But Baya's father caught her trying to escape, and in his rage had his entire fleet smashed to splinters rather than see his daughter wed to his enemy's son. Baya would not be deterred. Despite the darkness, she leapt into the sea, her limbs fighting the pull of the current as she struggled through the waves, calling out to Duli. Their names echoed across the bay as they tried to find their way to each other, but the sea was cold and the clouds hung heavy, blocking the light of the moon. From her lonely pier, Sancta Marathi heard them calling back and forth, back and forth in the darkness. She took pity on the lovers who wished for a new world together instead of an old world divided. With a simple gesture from Marathi, the clouds parted and the moon emerged, gilding the world in silver light. Duli and Baya found each other across the glimmering waves. Duli pulled his love up into the boat and they sailed to safety, far away from their families. They began a new life on a new shore and chose a new family name, Marathi. And this is where the Zimini tradition of choosing names began. Every year the Marathi family made a path of white stones, each one as round as the moon, down to the water, where they said prayers of thanks for the life they'd been able to make together. Sancta Marathi is known as the patron saint of impossible love.